Now, in these next few lectures, we're going to begin our discussion on molecular orbitals. Now, previously, we spoke about atomic orbitals and covalent bonds. In this lecture, we'll see how atomic orbitals of atoms combine to form covalent bonds, which are really molecular orbitals. So let's begin with the following simple example. So let's say we want to combine two neutral H atoms in a way to form a diatomic H2 molecule. So we want to form a covalent bond. So what must happen first? Well, initially, these two neutral H atoms are very far apart. And since they're neutral, they each have a proton in the nucleus and an electron surrounding that nucleus. So what happens as I begin to bring these molecules closer and closer and closer? Well, as I begin moving them closer, they begin to feel electrostatic force, Coulomb's law. Now, as I move them closer and closer, eventually I will bring them to a point when the electrostatic repulsion of the nuclei, of the protons found in the nuclei, will balance out the electrostatic attraction between the electrons and the protons in the nuclei. In other words, let's look at the following example. So, when I have these two protons a certain distance apart, the repulsion between these two protons going this way will equal the attraction of these electrons. In other words, this proton of, of uh, H atom 1 will attract the electron of H atom 2 and likewise H atom 2 will attract the electron of H atom 1. And in fact, when there are 0.7 angstroms, Angstrom simply means 1 times 10 to the negative 10 uh, meters apart. When they're this distance apart, a bond will form, a covalent bond will form. And in fact, as you move the two H atoms closer and closer from a far distance apart, energy begins to decrease until we reach this point, until we reach 0.7 uh, angstroms away. So if we graph energy versus our distance between them, we will see that a distance far apart, somewhere right here, we're going to have some energy. And as we begin moving them closer and closer, our energy will begin to decrease until we reach this point. And at this point, we have the minimum amount of energy. In other words, nature likes to minimize energy. The more destabilizing it is, the more energy we have, the less energy we have, the more stabilizing our compound is. So in other words, the beginning condition, our initial atoms, are at a higher energy than our final molecule. Now, what happens when I continue pushing them closer and closer? Well, as I begin pushing them closer and closer, closer and closer, the repulsion forces begin to increase dramatically. And that's exactly why we see that as we go past 0.7 angstroms, our, our energy begins to increase. So, as you bring atoms closer and closer, repulsion of the positively charged nuclei causes a sharp increase in energy as we see here. So as I move them closer past this distance, the electrons as well as protons begin to uh, repel one another and the energy dramatically increases. Once again, to recap, nature likes to form stabilizing structures. Nature will not form a structure that is higher in energy. In other words, if this was higher in energy than this, this molecule would not form. The reason this forms spontaneously is because our energy of initial molecules or atoms is lower than the final. So, now let's examine atomic orbitals. So what is the atomic orbital that our electron is in? Well, it's the 1s orbital. So let's say we have this atom, let's call it HA, H subscript A, and let's call this guy H subscript B. So this 
Here, this psi, Greek letter psi, simply represents the orbital or wave function. So let's say psi subscript HA comma 1S simply means that this is the 1S orbital of our HA atom and this is the 1S orbital of our HB atom. So when these orbitals, atomic orbitals, are very far apart, nothing really happens. But as I move them closer and closer, eventually, when I get to this point, these atomic orbitals will overlap and they will create something known as the molecular orbital or molecular bonding orbital. Now this guy is represented by psi or I'm sorry phi. So phi bonding is our molecular orbital. So when we see this symbol we usually think atomic orbitals and this is psi. When we see this symbol, phi, we think about molecular orbitals. So once again, atomic orbitals will combine to form molecular orbitals, or also known as covalent bonds. Now, from quantum mechanics, we know that whatever number of atomic orbitals that combine, they will form the same amount of molecular orbitals. In other words, there's a conservation number that we have to take into consideration. So, because two atomic orbitals combine, we should form two molecular orbitals. But here we see only one. So in the next lecture, we're going to see what the second uh, molecular orbital is.